everybody. This is Raul from Bass Musician Magazine, and today we have the great honor and pleasure of chatting with uh, bassist Ryan Zweifelhofer, uh, bassist for the band Acceptance out of the great state of Washington, our home state, uh, oh Seattle. Go. So hey, Ryan, welcome to Bass Musician Magazine. Great to have a chance to talk to you. Um, as often is the case, a lot of our readers would like to know about you kind of from the very beginning. Tell us about your base journey. How did you get to where you are now? It's a, That's a great question. It's actually a really interesting one. So um, I had played in some local bands. I, I kind of I started as a guitar player. Um, I was playing in some local bands. We had played with the band Acceptance way back when. I think it was really, really late 90s or very, very early 2000s and um, kind of developed a little bit of a relationship with them. And they had tryouts. I mean, they were looking for somebody. And I thought for sure, I misread the email or something. I thought for sure it was for a guitar. And so I show up with my gear and they go, what the heck are you doing? And I was like, well, I, I'm trying out. <laughs> and they go, well, it's for bass. And I said, well, I've, I've, I've never played bass before. And they said, well, can you try? And I said, okay, I'll give it a try. So they had an extra bass. Um, I think I used our drummer's bass, um, Garrett's, in, in his practice space in Tacoma, Washington, down in his parents' basement. Yeah. And I, it wasn't absolutely terrible. I mean, it wasn't great, but uh, I think it was good enough to get me the job. And um, that's kind of how I got my start. And I, you know, you have to get good real fast and you kind of have to figure out um, what you're doing when you've never played an instrument like that before. And so I think, um, you know, those first few years were, were probably a, a learning experience. My calluses were different <laughs> and they, uh, they hurt a lot more, but uh, I kind of fell in love with the instrument, uh, really kind of dived into it. And, you know, I never really, up until that point, never really thought of bass uh, that much, right? You know, I, I was a guitar player, and so I just wanted to, and I was a kid, too. You know, I was 17, 18, and I yeah. just wanted to play fast and loud and make lots of noise. And so I had to kind of rewire how I thought about music as a whole, um, especially coming from this position where, you know, I'm in charge of holding down the low end. So uh, that was how I got my start. And then over the years, you know, I just continued to fall in love with it and tried to get better. Um and then, you know, the band kind of broke up <laughs> for about 10 years. Uh, and, yeah, I didn't touch the bass. Um, well, that's not entirely true. I played in a band for a little bit with our guitar player, Kalen. Um, but I wasn't really into it. You know, I was kind of more focused on school and my education, so I was kind of helping them out. Uh, and, you know, just kind of set the guitar down. And I think about two years ago when we got back into doing acceptance and working on the new record, um, I had found that over those 10 years, I'd really kind of developed a different way of listening to music. You know, it, was e it was easier for me to um, kind of dive right back into bass, and I had a completely different perspective. I wanted to do different things with it, you know, and I kind of can't, I feel like I've come into my own, um, especially over these last few years. So that's that's kind of what led me to where I'm at right now. Nice. A lot of times, and I, I was a guitarist. Actually, if we go even further back, I played accordion to start out with, but I try to... <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> I try to stay away from, from that side of it, uh, for the polka circuit and all that stuff. But Beatles came along, and it, when it came to modern rock, the, the British invasion, but particularly the Beatles, yeah. uh, it was it was just that's the instrument to play, you know. And so I got my hands on a used Fender, uh, borrowed it for about a month or two, and my mom saw I was earnest enough, and from there on, you know, I stayed with guitar uh, until much later on when I finally got a hold of a bass. But I think the biggest challenge was changing the mindset from going from a guitarist to a bass because yeah. as a guitarist you're prone to want to noodle more you want you're, you're filling in more you're thinking in a chordal fashion which some bass players do yeah. but i i started taking lessons because i really needed to change the mindset and the main thing my teacher just kept saying is stop thinking like a guitarist you need yeah. to think <laughs> groove you need to think yeah. this you know this is you're, you're noodling too much yep and uh, i remember i'd work on a lick or something and come in all proud oh look what i can do and he'd say you're thinking like a guitarist again <laughs> and uh he he's, he told me that he'd gone to some audition for a band 
and he wanted to impress him, so he was doing some some rapid fire kind of licks, and the 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 guy turned around and looked at him. He says, "You know that that thing you were doing," and he was expecting, "Oh, he's going to say he liked it." He says, "Don't do that. Don't, <laughs> don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> just, just cut yeah. that out. I yeah. want I want the I want the groove. I want you know the feel. Stay percussive. Don't do this." So a lot of times it's a challenge, but I do find that it enriches the style because you will incorporate some of your guitar playing and some of your bass playing and especially when you've got like a hiatus there where you can kind of listen to things and go okay this is how i want to work this you know it certainly in, in, enriches now again you'd mentioned the band there was there was a break uh as i was doing some research uh, listening a little to your guys's music you fall into kind of uh alternative rock genre Mm -hmm. And I'd, I'd seen some of the, the comments, the the fans uh, were, were thrilled to hear the music again because they're like, we haven't heard you since 2006, but, but it's been 11 years, what's going on? So tell, tell us about what, what's going on now with the band, what, what's going, what do you got cooking? A lot. So our record had just just came out um, on the 24th, so last weekend, um, Colliding by Design, came out on Rise Records. Um, and, you know, we just did a string of shows down the West Coast. So we did uh, Los Angeles on Friday, San Francisco on Saturday, and then uh, hometown in Seattle on Sunday. Uh, whirlwind, whirlwind little trip. You know, we're, we're, all, we're all old guys now with careers and families and stuff. And Siberian Huskies that kind of run around from time to time. So uh, doing those full those full three month tours are kind of out of the question now. So we pack as much fun and uh, kind of excitement as we can in a, in a short amount of time. Uh, so we've been doing that off and on um, over the last two years. We've been flying out at least once a weekend doing regional, uh, regional runs and stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, getting ready to head over to Australia with our good friends in a band called Taking Back Sunday from New Jersey. Oh, nice. Yeah, we leave for that in about a, a little over a week. And um, like you said, you know, most of the folks seem really, really excited to hear the new songs and mm -hmm. they don't hate it. And which is a really, really big uh, weight off our shoulders because you never know uh, coming back after so long. And we, we changed our sound up quite a bit. We were more of a more of a pop rock um, kind of some people called it emo rock back then in the 2000s. And it was heavier and a little faster and kind of more tied in with those kind of post-punk roots that we we all kind of came to the band with. Mm -hmm. And this this record is different. You know, it's a lot more atmospheric. Um, I think it's really a representation of where we are as as 30-somethings, you know, 30-something-year-olds in, in our lives now and kind of how we've progressed and kind of evolved as uh, not musicians necessarily. I mean, that's part of it, but just as music fans. You know, you start to appreciate different things and... Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I think we brought a lot of that into the record. And so this has been, I, I'd be lying if I told you there was there was dull moments or moments that I've hated over the last two years. It's been nothing but smiles and just good times. And we're just very, very excited to see where it's going. Uh, a lot of positive feedback and we're just going to continue to play as much as we can and get out in front of people that haven't seen us in 10 years. We're still battling that, you know, because we can't really hit every single town all the time now. And uh, just trying to find new places that we can go for... Uh, to show off, you know, the new record and, and kind of connect with some of the older songs and, and share those with folks who haven't seen us in a long time. So that's kind of on the agenda for 2017 and beyond. Nice, nice. Yep. And what what would you say, because you mentioned it, it's an evolution. Yeah. What would you say have been the things that have influenced in, in this evolution? Because age is obviously one thing. You look at life differently. Uh, I, I think about songs that when you're a teenager, you're listening to, and you know, you're oh, usually either about a breakup or some frustrated love or some, you know, life sucks, it's all terrible. And now, now that you've survived, you know, mm -hmm. the most uh, inflammable <laughs> times, you know, what, what, what is the message? What are you, what are you saying? What, what you, what's influencing the, the writing? Yeah, you know, I think, um, for me personally, uh, I, I kind of went backwards. You know, you spend a lot of your teenage years, maybe your early twenties. Um, for me, I, I I was always into the I was into loud music, loud, hard, fast. You know, I started as a thirteen year old kid loving punk rock, and um, kind of went from that and got into the the heavier hardcore scene. And you know, I've always I don't know with with so much attention on that. And I think when you're in your twenties um, and you're a little bit younger. Um, 
some people are fortunate enough to have a, a larger perspective when it comes to music. I don't think I did. You know, I think um, it took these last <laughs> 10 years, buddy, it took these last 10 years to um, really get me to almost look backwards a little bit. You know, I'm focusing on different things. You know, there's vocal melodies will strike me differently. You know, I mean, I'll go through and listen to Bruce Springsteen's, you know, catalog and it's just, <laughs> he likes Bruce Springsteen. It's one of his favorites. There you go. Um, <laughs> and, you know, it's just I listen for different things now. And I, you mentioned kind of the percussive element of um, kind of bass and the rhythm section as a whole. And mm -hmm. that's something I kind of missed, you know, in those early years. And I think one of my biggest evolutions is just really kind of, you know, isolating certain things. And especially the rhythm section, I've spent a lot of time doing um, just with kind of older stuff that I kind of miss along the way. And, gotcha. uh, it's been that that's kind of opened my eyes a little bit and then from there it's you know it, it's a rabbit hole you, oh, yeah. you start to you start to go down and it's like okay cool i've got a ton of stuff that i'm just loving from the 70s i'm gonna push it back a little bit in the 60s and it's not that i completely missed everything you know i've always loved 80s music but um i think there were some people that i just missed along the way you know people my dad would listen to that and you just grow up thinking, oh, it's dad's music. Yeah, not necessarily mine, but I think you, you always end up coming home, right? And I think that stuff kind of has an influence. And so now when I go back and listen to, listen to older songs, he loved Bruce Springsteen. You know, he loved uh, Fogarty, like all those all those old rockers. You know, yeah. that was kind yeah. of his thing. Uh, that and Rat, which is really weird to me. I, I That one's, I haven't gotten into Rat. I, <laughs> I draw the line at Rat, but um, kind of going back and just listening to it and remembering being in the garage with him and it's like, man, yeah, he was on to something. He, he knew more about this stuff than I did, I think. So yeah. that's that's kind of been my evolution. Well, it's kind of what speaks to you at the time. I remember I'd, I'd been outside of a, a show. It was a, a two-band marquee, Rat and Poison. And so okay. it was like Rat Poison. <laughs> And I'm going, you know, either either this is an exterminator conference or, uh, sure. you know, it's, it's a rock concert. But it, there, there are, you know, Certainly, some parts that I think are redeemable from a lot of them, the, the, those times, it really yeah. just kind of depends what's happening in your life while that's going on. Um, I just had the, the opportunity to talk with uh, Verdine White from Earth, Wind, and Fire oh, uh, cool. down at the NAMM show. And I had to tell him that, you know, Earth, Wind, and Fire was a staple in my high school years in the Volkswagen station wagon on eight track, yeah. you know, and you'd get Boogie Wonderland and you're just like, okay, yeah, this is, yep, yep. This is in. the soundtrack <laughs> to my, my existence. You know, I'm going out tonight, I'm going to see my friends or, or something. And a lot of these, these tunes had some of those elements that fit in with whatever you were doing. And I think even in a subconscious kind of way, if it was just, you know, I think people listen more to radio before there was satellite and, you know, CDs and MP4s and things where you wouldn't, you didn't have to know what was going on around you. You could just stay in your bubble in your car. Um, but you had things that you were exposed to and, you know, and some of them did uh, rub off. And I'm sure like with my son, uh, who's 30 now, there's tunes that when he hears them, he's going to go, yeah, I remember that. When sure. we were driving along, or we were a kid, and we're we're singing, you know, Aerosmith or uh, yeah. or stuff like that. And we took him to an Aerosmith concert here in Portland, and he looked at me and he said, "What are all these old people doing here?" And I'm like, "These are the people that grew up with Aerosmith, you know." It's yeah, like, they're, exactly. They're, they're not a young band, you know. They've been at it for a while, you know. It's surprising, but. Anyway, enough about me. Moving forward, you've got some tours going on, the new record. Um, don't let me forget to, to uh, make sure that we know how, for, for the readers, where they can find out more information about that. Probably go ahead right now. How can people find out more about the record? You know, Where would they look? We're everywhere. Yeah, we're everywhere. So um, we, we did release it with our friends in Rise who are down in Portland. They're kind of a rock label down in Portland. Um, and they've got it up everywhere. So if you want to find it on Spotify, I'd love, I'd love for you to check it out and kind of Excellent. encourage you to give it a listen and, and let me know what you think. And I mean, it's everywhere else too. I think Google Play Music's got it. Um, I don't know if, I don't know if uh, Best Buy even carries CDs anymore, but <laughs> uh, you, can order, you can order it online. We've got some cool vinyl options um, from our online store. So if you go to acceptanceband.com, you can find some stuff there. But, you know, really, I just 
I would love just for people just to listen to it. You know, sure. I mean, uh, you know, it's always it's it's exciting when you let something out into the wild like that that you've been working on for a while. So, oh, totally. I'm just, I'm just curious and uh, really, really excited to hear what people think about it. But yeah, Spotify is probably a great place to start. Absolutely. And, and you know, I think it's also really exciting when you've got something that gets into people's heads. We were at a, at a concert, uh, a group, I, I spoke with a, the bassist. They're out of New Orleans. We went to see them a couple weeks ago. Mm-hmm. And it was really exciting that the audience was singing along with the tunes because they'd been listening ahead and they already knew them. And you're yep. kind of going, wow, you know, it, 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 uh, it, you're a relatively newer band. You kind of go, wow, this is great. You know, the following and, you know, this is important enough. They've learned the music. You know, this is this is really super. And the world's smaller now. You know, I mean, when we put Phantoms out, it was such a big deal. Like, I mean, big deal for us. You know, you had to hurry up and wait. You know, they didn't have the idea of a single was you couldn't just put something up on YouTube. You know, you really, if you wanted people to hear it, you had to spend a lot of money getting a lot of placement and it was just different, you know, and I think um, it's it's changed the way how we consume music. I, I, there's there's pros and cons on either side of kind of where we're at, but the truth is we're where we're at. So it's um, really fortunate for us that we've been able to uh, kind of put songs out there relatively easy, you know, before the record came out to get, hopefully kind of get folks excited about it and um, like you said a few of those songs came out earlier than the record so yeah. we were playing some shows on our record release weekend and I know <laughs> more people were singing those two songs that we had released leading up to the record uh, than the whole record but um, you know it's just easier now and sure. it's, well it's easier for consumers and, and listeners and, and people who appreciate music to kind of get their hands on um, songs sooner than later and um, we're, we're, we're doing our best to navigate that new world because when we were doing this in 2005, it was right at the right at the cusp. You know, they labels didn't know how to deal with people streaming or downloading and illegally taking your record. And our our record our record leaked um, about eight months before it actually was released on Columbia Records. And so that had a now it's almost like you kind of want that to happen. I mean, it's yeah, great yeah. You know, that gets you a lot of great exposure. But back then, it really was a detriment. And um, we're just Every day I'm learning something new about the state of affairs in kind of the music industry, and uh, it's it's fascinating. <laughs> it is totally evolving. Now, I definitely would be remiss. I know everybody always likes to talk a little bit about gear. Tell yeah. us a little bit about what you're playing on. What do you got? So I'm actually really excited. I, uh, I've been working with the good people down in Austin, Texas called Moniker Guitars, okay. uh, smaller kind of boutique shop. Uh, lo- everything is custom. Um, even on the back of the headstock, they put a little one out of one there for you. Uh, but I hooked up with a guy down there, Steve. Um, I've got a few buddies that, that played monikers, and um, those friends were like, "Okay, I, I know you're looking for a guitar. You've been a P bass guy since forever. You know, I played my Music Man's, and I've got a GNL uh, L2000 that um, I toured on the Phantoms record with, and love all those guitars and." just kind of ready for something new and so um i've been working with steve and the and the folks over at moniker for about four months uh and it it, it arrived about that it actually arrived the day before our last rehearsal so i got one rehearsal in with it um before we headed off for our shows uh but it's you know it was one of those moments where you're just like man this is a custom guitar this is this is everything i have been missing out all these years um, so I'm playing a moniker Zuma bass, which I absolutely love. Um, kind of bounce around between a few different heads. Um, been using actually since we do fly out so much and we're not bringing that big van and trailer anymore. Uh, we've been flying out with some uh, the Terror heads from Orange, um, and their Terror bass head is great. I actually really really dig it for what we're trying to do. Um, that and I play a lot of Ampeg. Uh, still got my SBT classic head, and it's kind of my staple. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then I, I kind of always, I've always kept it simple with my my kind of gear selection. Um, I just run through a Sans Amp, try try amp pedal. Nice. So I got three channels on a Sans Amp, and I'm running through a head with five knobs, and I just need enough growl and enough uh, enough low end, enough high end, and I'm good to go. But that's kind of that's that's my state of affairs. <laughs> gotcha. Well, you know, and there's 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 all kinds of approaches, and I I I'm always interested in seeing what people are using um i don't think there's a wrong 
approach. I myself am not really much of a pedal kind of guy. I like to yeah. hear the sound of the instrument. And yeah. even when it comes to um, adjusting an EQ or something, I'm, I'm kind of like just straight up. Well, just let the sound come out. I want to hear yeah. what's coming out instead of going, okay, I've got all these complicated settings and, and right. all that. So it, it makes it more challenging. But there's there's a lot to be said for the sound that comes from the instrument. And you notice that with a custom instrument in comparison to a stock instrument, way more. Yeah. Oh yeah. Even, I mean, I had, I played American P basses. They weren't the, they, you know, they weren't the, the lower end ones. And like, mm -hmm. still it's just, the difference was, I mean, it was, it was astounding to me. You know, yeah. I never had an instrument that was built for me and you can feel it. And I, I remember just thinking like, man, the string definition, it's just absurd. Like I'm, I'm sorry, on my Zoom, uh, I'm actually using quarter pounder P bass pickup. So, I mean, I'm not going too far outside of my sure. comfort zone, but between the pickups and just how that guitar is built, um, every the sustain and just the feel and just the kind of the string definition and it's all just I, you know I, I've had one of those like well, dang you know I've been missing out for <laughs> for a long time but absolutely love it um, and the thing you know what's really interesting about gear because I've been thinking a lot about it lately um, with Phantoms our only other big our only other full length record. Um, it was kind of straightforward. It was straightforward rock. So I didn't need to have a lot of versatility, I think, with my instruments. And mm -hmm. now we did a lot of different things with the new record, Colliding by Design. And so there is there is some room where I can actually kind of um, step outside a little bit, maybe grab a few pedals. I wouldn't use them for every song. But, you know, it's I'm, I'm thinking a lot more about how I can kind of expand and grow um, in that area. And so... I'm, I'm eyeballing a lot of stuff from Dark Glass right now. I'm, I'm just kind of enamored with everything they make. So I'm yeah. saving up all my pennies because it's not cheap, but I'm saving up my pennies and I'm uh, probably going to pick up uh, the Vintage Ultra pedal uh, here, hopefully before we leave for Australia because I think that would be a great um, replacement for my Sans amp. I think it's got way more versatility. Um, and I'm just, yeah, really excited about the stuff that those guys do. It's just, it's gorgeous. You know, it sounds amazing. And, um, yeah, so I'm, I'm looking at a whole bunch of different new gear options because I've got all this stuff that I can kind of replicate off the record now. So it's a little bit exciting for me, and it's a growing period as a bass player, I think, so coming from just, all right, well, I'm going to take it, I'm going to plug it into my P-Bass, yeah. I'm going to put it in the amp, and I'm just going to go. <laughs> there you go. You'll be well, lucky if I bring my tuner to the show. <laughs> there you go. Well, and with so many traveling, a lot of groups are, are doing just a DI and, and letting the soundboard take it and kind of run with it, you know, and so... Yeah, we did that with the. We did that for a few shows. It was the most nerve-wracking experience as as <laughs> as a touring musician that I have ever had. You know, I, something happened where we rent a lot of gear because again we're flying out and it just costs a lot to to, to ship it. Ship. Yeah, yeah, my SPT head. It's not a light thing, and so it's not trying to pay a couple hundred bucks every time I'm, we're playing a gig. And so we had this thing where we we were renting gear from an SIR somewhere. I forget where it was. And for some reason, the bass head just didn't show up. And I mean, we—it wasn't a headlining show either. I mean, we were we were opening, so it's not like you can. I didn't have a lot of wiggle room. Definitely, definitely didn't have a lot of time. And so we were like, "Well," I, I said, "F it." I said, "F it." Yep. I'm going right through the sands amp. And in my ears, we all play with in ears, and it it just it sounded awesome. And I was like, "Well, well, shit. Why haven't I been doing this the whole time?" <laughs> I can put that sand amp's only this big. I can put it in my I can put it in my backpack. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I've noticed a few people doing that. It's always you know, like I said, it was nerve wracking, but it, it turned out just fine. <laughs> well and, and especially when with, with some of the bigger venues. Like we were yeah. at the, the amphitheater here and uh, a lot of the bigger groups are just going DI because yep. they're kinda like, you know, they've got a bank of speakers way bigger and uh, you know, it's, it's how you play with your sound, and it really depends on the music you're playing and all that. Well, Ryan, I we appreciate you taking some time out of your busy schedule. I know it's kind of end of the day. People see it's dark around both of us. We're yeah. here in the great Northwest. But sharing part of your journey and all that, just so that people can, if, if they weren't paying close attention, your website again so people can find out more about what's going on, where you're touring, and how they can yeah. stay on top of this acceptanceband.com um if you search acceptance on twitter we're there uh facebook we're there instagram um we do a pretty good job letting everybody know where we're heading out so acceptanceband.com twitter facebook you name it we're 
we're available and, and, and ready to ready to welcome you into the family, I guess. <laughs> there you go. Well, folks, you've seen it here. Ryan's Weifelhofer. You Direct. actually, I got to stop you. You actually pronounced my name. Nobody gets my name right, and you nailed it. You, you absolutely nailed it. It's, it's because it, in my college years, I took a year of German. There you go. It, it, seemed, it seemed like it would be the, a good language. I actually was signed up for Russian, but they deported the professor before the class started. So I ended up with a very sweet little German nun who insisted on our... And so by the glutter, and I practiced before we talk because I'm going, okay, it's, it's like zwei, like ein zwei, so mm -hmm. so why not, you know? If, if I yes. can, I, I'll do the best I can. And if it was an easier name, like, I don't know, two syllables, I might mess it up, but I'm, I'm glad. <laughs> you were forced to focus on it. You were forced to get it right. There your we part. go. <laughs> well, people, you've seen Ryan talking to you here. Acceptance is the band. Check out what they're doing. Listen to their music. Now you know where to find it. See them playing live. Yell at them that you saw it here on Bass Musician Magazine.